Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got something really special for you today. These are my daily drivers. These are the High Vice Swan three ways. In this video, we're gonna take them apart. I'm going to refinish them and then we're gonna assemble them, make some tweaks to the crossover and give you an overall overview of everything that's going on with these. Um, I've had these built for probably about six months at this point and I listen to them every day. And I've been asked so many times um, about the details of these. And I've really wanted to do a video on them and I didn't film the original build. So I figured rather than just taking them apart and showing you the guys the drivers and the crossover, I'd refinish them and try a different technique. We're gonna spray some lacquer on these. I'm gonna do a blend of some semi-gloss and some satin. We're gonna see how it turns out. And then we're gonna show you the crossover. Like I say, make some tweaks go through the drivers and make some measurements too. So stick around, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's get right into it. Okay, so I've got all of our parts laid out here. We're looking at our woofer here first with the phase plug. This is some sort of carbon or Kevlar mesh. It's got a ring that goes around the front to hide everything. It's shielded. I've got our port tubes here. This foam, that you're seeing here is included and there's actually quite a bit more that comes with it so very nice our AMT here is actually an aluminum housing really quality piece we've got a two inch dome mid-range here we've got our terminal cup for bi amping if you want and then I've got our crossover laid out here pretty good parts we've got an iron core inductor but all the other parts are pretty good nothing really to complain about there so I'm just gonna take a second here to go through each individual driver. So first up, we've got our woofer, nice shielded woofer um, with the face plug. Next up, we've got our two inch dome mid-range. This is sealed, this is a self-contained unit. And then we've got our AMT. Like I say, this is a real weighty aluminum housing, so it feels really good. And now we've got our crossover here laid out. The only changes I'm gonna make to this are gonna be to rewire and reflow some leads. They've gotten a little bit of wear from being taken out and in so many times, so there is a resistor modification that you can make to the high end, but we're gonna leave this stock. I kinda like the brightness, and I can EQ on my preamp, so I'm gonna leave this stock. If you have made the mod and you felt like it made an improvement, let me know down in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear that. So all we're doing at this point is adding some new terminals back onto our leads here. Like I say, I'm gonna strip these and solder them again and clean them up a little bit. I kind of rushed through the first time. Had a few of these terminals fail on me, so if you're ordering cheap terminals, make sure you give them a nice little tug and make sure they're not gonna slide off on you. So I'm gonna solder on my new leads here, take my time with a really hot iron, making sure it's clean. And then I'm gonna retroactively hot glue all of my components down. Ideally, you would use zip ties, and I actually ordered quite a few for this, but none of them are the right gauge for the holes that they've got on this board, so I'm just taking my time with the hot glue, making sure I'm not gonna bog down or overload my resistors, making sure I've got my coils nice and secure. Really just taking my time here, making sure I've got everything nice and firm. Okay, so the lacquer has been sprayed on. You guys are gonna have to forgive me. It was a learning curve for me, so I'm filming it was a complete mess, but we got it on there. I'm really happy with the result. And here it is. Like I say, I mixed a semi-gloss with a satin um, and did some really close-up spraying. Got a real nice, smooth finish. It looks really good in person. It's got a little bit of a, a gloss to it here on the camera, but in person it's real subtle, and I'm really happy with the result that we got. The poly that was on there before was very yellow and amber and really darkened it up a little bit. So this satin finish really shows the wood grain just lets it really pop and do its own thing. So this next step is a little unnecessary for this kit just because the recess is so precise it doesn't need any black paint to hide any sort of reveal, but I'm going to go ahead and do that while I've got it apart. It's always a good idea.
So now that our recess paint is drying up, it's time to go ahead and add our stuffing back in. So there's a brace that runs through the center of this cabinet. So you're gonna go ahead and need to cut everything into four pieces in order to get everything to fit properly. I'm just using tension. If you cut this to the right size, that brace will pin this into place and you don't have to use any spray adhesives or hot glue or wood glue to get this stuff to stay into place, which is really nice. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and insert my crossover board and glue that down before inserting the bottom layer. It's a really, really tight fit. When I get this all in here, I'm gonna show you guys up close and you're gonna see how tight of a squeeze it is. So now we've got our enclosure squared away, it's time to go ahead and start wiring everything up. I like to start with my binding posts, no particular reason. I'm not torquing these down too hard, I'm using a drill, but that last little bit I'm doing by hand just to make sure I don't tear out any of this MDF. After that, I'm going to go ahead and slide my port tubes in, I'm just using super glue for these. They're a really tight fit to begin with, so no worries there. After that, we can move on to wiring up our drivers, get all those wired into place. Make sure you do it in the correct order, as that tweeter is recessed right below this dome mid-range to get those close acoustical centers. I did have to fight with this gasketing. It's been used so many times, the pressure has stretched it out quite a bit, so making sure I've got all that hidden behind there before I tighten anything down. And I'm going to go ahead and use my fingers to get these screws started so that I know I'm lined up. After that, it's time to tighten everything down. And once again, I'm using my hand for that last little bit of torque, I'm not using this drill to bear down and tear out any of that MDF. And so now that everything's back together, it's time to make some measurements. We're going to start with frequency response. These are going to be measured on axis, 16 inches away from our tweeter. Go ahead and do our first sweep here. We're using Roo for this and a UMIC 1. And we can see we've got that really high rising in on the top there. We'll go ahead and do our second channel, same thing. And our responses match up pretty nicely. Once again, we've got that rising response there on the top end. So now that we've got our frequency response data, we're going to go ahead and move on to running an impedance sweep. For this, I'm going to be connecting up the DATS V3 by Dayton Audio. I'm just going to go ahead and run impedance sweep here comes out just like we expected. After that I'm going to go ahead and swap over to our second channel and we're going to repeat the same steps we just did. So I'll go ahead and get the second channel wired up and run another impedance sweep. And it matches up nicely with our first channel, just like we wanted. So now that we've got our data out of the way, I'm going to give some of my subjective thoughts on these. I'm just going to be really upfront and say that I'm a total fanboy for these. I listen to these for a couple of hours every single day. They image like nothing else. They soundstage really well. I'm not sure exactly how wide the dispersion is. I would have to do some off-axis measurements to confirm that, but I have a feeling it's pretty good. Um, I run these with a high pass on my Emotiva, and it's high passed around 95, so they don't see a lot of bass, but running these full range, they put out incredible bass. Often, I'll turn off my crown and run these full range just to check back in with them and see how they're doing, and I, every time, I've got to get up and make sure my subwoofers are off. I mean, they put out an incredible amount of bass, but for me personally, running them with the high pass just gives me a little peace of mind that I'm running less distortion by trying to put all that bass through them and I've got a 21 and an 18 um, subwoofer that I'm using so I don't really need these to put out much bass but if you're gonna run these full range I think in a small room they will absolutely do full range 
I've got these sitting on Dayton's 20 inch speaker stands. I think these were around $80 when I purchased them. They're real easy to put together. They match up perfectly with this grain that I've got on there. And they sit perfectly on axis at my listening position, so it works out perfectly. Overall, I'm really happy that we redid these. The lacquer looks a lot better than the poly that I had on there, and that's nothing against polyurethane. That's my inexperience with applying it. I think from now on, I'm probably going to try to perfect my lacquer technique, as I'm really happy with the result of these. And as I kind of touched on before, it was a little bit of touch and go. Sorry I couldn't film all of it, but there was a lot of experimentation going on until I got it right. But once I did, I mean, I'm just really impressed by spraying lacquer. So at the time of recording this, Swan is selling these on Amazon for $350 free tax. And I think that's still a really, really good deal if you're looking for high value, high performance, hi-fi. So thank you to everybody that's watched this far. Um, if you've not already, consider subscribing. I've got some really big and fun builds coming along. We're going to play with some maple veneer and some spray lacquer. Uh, I'm not going to give away exactly what we're building yet, but I think you guys are going to like it. So please stick around and watch those when they come out. I appreciate everyone that's watched this far, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.